Let's begin at the very beginning. There's great mystery that still surrounds the forgotten lands of Atlantis, created by the mighty Greek god Poseidon, who is known to the Sumerians as Enki, and protector of the divine serpent knowledge, which has been, you know, smeared by the church for thousands of years. What important secrets have still managed to survive some of these cataclysms of the past that you know led to Atlantis disappearing? And, and also relating back to some of these practices of dark magic that some of the information we're going to go into, look, it looks like even connects back to maybe even a portal to lower dimensions. It may sound like something right out of a science fiction novel. It really does. But when you look at the evidence, you start to realize that it's anything but fiction. So let's get a little background first to understand this epic history that's preceded us and the secret knowledge that's kind of been fought over for so long. According to the philosopher Plato, he mentioned this in two of his writings that the Timaeus and Critias, the subcontinent of Atlantis existed 9,000 years before him or and could be found west of the Pillars of Hercules, which we know of as the Straits of Gibraltar separating Spain and Morocco. And here's Here's a nice image you can see of separating the two continents there. The name Atlantic is actually derived from the word Atlas, who is a son of, who is actually the first son of the god Poseidon, and who is the king of Atlantis. And the mountain range in northern Morocco is actually named after him, the Atlas Mountains. So it's kind of neat to see that that stuff is, all those remnants are kind of still remaining today. And a lot of people don't know their origins. But um, what made Atlantis so important that we have to understand it was far more than its physical beauty, but, but was the conscious mindset that gets contained within the people there. This was known as the serpent or dragon knowledge, which meant universal consciousness of the creator of all. Imagine an entire society, if you will, free from all of the bounds of materialism, money, and war, where their focus instead was on the acquisition of higher knowledge and connection to the world and stars around us. What life would each individual live if they could aspire to that? This information we're about to go through in, um, into, our, into our ancient past connects back to that very idea that and, and kind of the purpose of what we could be doing and, and kind of how that got led astray. In 1925, there was an important discovery made in, um, if you look at Teotihuacan in Mexico and the Aztec Empire, you can find some important writings that were found below one of the pyramids of the sun, which were known as the Emerald Tablets. And if you go to Teotihuacan and you look at the site, um, you find vast underground areas underneath the pyramids. And in one of those chambers, as I said, in, in 1925, there was a pyramid priest and researcher who was named Dr. Doriel, who uncovered these, these ancient tablets that we know of as, as the Emerald Tablets. And the Emerald Tablets contain some of the most important evidence we have for both the teachings and wisdom of Atlantis, as well as connecting to the divine serpent knowledge that eventually kind of fell behind the wayside of history and, and almost forgotten from a lot of the, the dark things that happened in between. And the first thing you got to ask is, what is it doing, you know, in Mexico? So, and those are the things that we're going to help reveal here. So, Dr. Doriel, using his deep knowledge when he acquired these tablets, he translated these, and they're named Emerald Tablets because they're made of this strange alchemical material that that is reported indestructible. And you know, so in this day and age, we think of something indestructible and it seems like complete fantasy to us until you start looking into the idea of alchemy. And if you have a message that's so important, you would have to put it on something that could last forever because you wouldn't want to risk it, it being destroyed and lost. And that's kind of the beauty behind the perfection of, of the alchemist and the path and, and along with this message, the message of the Emerald Tablets itself. So if we learn about the Emerald Tablets and the author, you find out it's Thoth of Egypt, who is a later incarnation of Hermes, these, these master alchemists, right? And if anyone has read the book, The Alchemist, it's kind of a famous book, I highly recommend it. Uh, you become familiar with this hidden world around us that exists to these properties and elements that were the idea of turning like lead into gold. And that, and the, and is that magic or is that alchemy? And so the, in a lot of ways, magic, you know, taking out of the reference of pulling a rabbit out of a hat and connecting it back to real magic, which is about, you know, the manipulation of matter and things around us. That's that's real magic, and that's what we're really going to go into now. And those represent the fundamentals of of alchemy. So these ancient alchemists of our day, uh, you may know them as wizards and sorcerers. Think Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, and you'll begin to get the idea of of who these these men really were. The hidden world around us of white and black magic is real, and a lot of it's been been greatly lost. But you'll see that some of it has been retained uh, in, in in kind of in very dark ways, and 
and it's striking to see it once you see it all around you in, in, in the symbolism that it represents. So the emerald tablets found in Teotihuacan in Mexico were much more than simply these artifacts of antiquity, but they represented the culmination of nearly all of that Atlantean wisdom that was later that was then lost after. So the emerald tablets, what they really reveal is who we really are kind of as light beings. And if you look into it, um, our genetics in, in the photons that are at our, at our deepest level, you, you find that we really are just light beings. It's not really, it doesn't just come back to a um, primal animal instinct. There's, there's much more to it than that. And so these tablets kind of help us with that knowledge to understand that. And they can be truly profound when someone reads them because of the knowledge that's contained there. Okay, so the Emerald Tablets, along with other Gnostic writings like the Nagamati script scriptures, which, which Rex has read, and the Book of Enoch, they give us a rare glimpse into some of these pure forms of, of kind of pre-religion and, and what it used to be. And this can give us an idea of, of what these writings were and what they really contained and why that was so important. Think of them as guides to our highest state, these, these ancient writings. They're much more than just, than, than just these ancient cuneiform tablets to say, okay, what happened, um, what happened during this time period? They're really about understanding kind of where we were at that time period and then what happened to us. And that's why I think they're so important. Um, so the Emerald Tablets represent 13, there's 13 different tablets with two additional supplemental. And you can notice that there's a strong correlation between the serpent knowledge and also the representation of the coiled Kundalini energy within us. Anybody who practices yoga, meditation, you know that you know all about what that really is, which is all about unlocking the true potential of who we are. And you can trace this back to, you know, ancient Indian Indian religions in the subcontinent where you get, you know, more pure forms of religion still around like Hinduism and in the forms of Buddhism. So today, some of these symbols are still around and are still found very commonly, like in in the caduceus, which is our medical um, our medical symbol today. And this is, of course, the this is referencing the legacy of Thoth that was handed down. This was his symbol that was given to him from his father Enki, Poseidon, and it represents our double helix DNA. And I just think it's profound that the two serpents are wound right around that, representing our DNA and all the things that connected this serpent knowledge. And it's on our medical industry, on all these buildings and cars driving around and we'd ignore it. There's, there's a lot more questions that, that we really do need to be asking about our, our history to find the truth. So much of our past history has been coerced by these archonic forces, but great change is, is on the horizon right now. And just as the Mayans predict, the dark days of Pisces, which have been ruled by these archons and the eagle, are finally beginning to collapse right now as this great awakening of Aquarius begins. And that's why so many things have been happening in the last couple of years. Kind of the end of an empire collapsing, throw everything you can at, at, at it, and try to do what you can of the Mayans of the people to coerce them and change it, but we've rejected it largely and with great help. And so thankfully, things like World War III have not happened and, and we're still continuing and, and things are getting better and better every day. I think you can see that if you look around you because they're no longer able to manipulate our actions as the duality of our reality has shifted. That's why all of a sudden we're now kind of on the lights, the, the, the positive side of this. And so with that, that negative polarity that has ruled this planet for thousands of years by these archons and eagle and all of these kind of jealous ruling gods have has now reversed as we're coming into Aquarius. As we head towards kind of our infinite future in the, in the center of our galaxy, that's what that's what all the ancient cultures talked about. This central point of our galaxy where the energy centers are, are much higher and conscious levels can just reach their highest state. And that's where kind of beings reach in a certain evolutionary point and they can their highest state. So, and here we are right now. And so I, I see us as being, an, um, as, as making it through that great dark period. And we've, and we're just leading out of that right now. The important thing to remember is that the dark days of the past have nothing to do with the future. Because remember, now is all that matters. So even though these dark things have happened in the past and you can research them and find the truth, don't let them control you. Just, you just simply move on with your own future.